at the top of the page and filling in the bullets, I'm going to draw a happy parabola and refer to that happy parabola when we fill in We fill in the bullets to the right. Like so you can draw a sad parabola, so you can draw it upside down. No, I mean the difference being the one positive one. At the top of the page, so standard form of a quadratic. In order to have a quadratic, you have to have an x squared, degree two. Okay, it could be plus or minus the x term in the middle. So we get a quadratic by multiplying two binomials or a monomial times a binomial. X times X is X squared. And then we have the plus or minus the C. I don't know if you can see that minus. The important thing, though, is that A cannot be zero. Because if it was, you'd have zero X squared, which is zero, changing that quadratic from linear. So you need to have an A value other than zero. The graph is a parabola, which is a U-shaped curve. And as Mike told us, it's symmetric about the axis of symmetry. It's a dotted line that goes right through the center so that the left side would fold onto the right side. I often abbreviate in my notes and homework by AOS, axis of symmetry. Now because the axis of symmetry is a line and it's a vertical line, its equation is going to be x equals. Vertical lines are x equals, horizontal are y equals. The formula to find the axis of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a. You have to find that first. Then once you have the axis of symmetry, that'll tell you where the vertex is. It's called the vertex or the turning point. So when you find the vertex, that's the x or the y value of your x is b over 2a y. When you find the vertex, that's your max or min in your word problems. What's the maximum profit? What's the minimum profit? So on and so forth. So if a is greater than zero, it opens upward, and it's a happy parabola. In your vertex. If it's upward, which is this one here, is a minimum. If A is less than zero, now remember, A greater than zero means A is positive. Positive numbers are greater than zero. A less than zero means A is negative, because negative numbers are less than zero. So all this means if A is positive versus A is negative. So the parabola opens downward. So that's a sad parabola. So therefore, the vertex is going to be a maximum point. All right, number one. It says, tell whether the graph of y equals x squared minus 8x opens upward or downward. Well, that you don't need to do anything. You look at the equation. Your a is 1, even though it's not written. But to tell whether it opens upward or downward is whether it's positive or negative. Since it's positive, it's going to open upward. It's going to be like this. Find the coordinates of the vertex and write the equation of the axis of symmetry. So in, I have to start in order to find the vertex, you need x to plug in y. So you first have to find your axis of symmetry. So that's x equals negative b over 2a. So write down your a, b, and c value from this equation. The a value is the number before the x squared. The b uh, value is before the x term. If there's no x term, it's 0. And then c is last. So when I do negative b over 2a, a negative of a negative 8 over 2a is really 8 over 2, which is 4. So that's the axis of symmetry.
Remember, it's always a line, so it has to have the x equals. The vertex I get when I plug in x in the equation to find y. So y equals 4 squared minus 8 times 4 plus 8. So 16 minus 32 is what? Negative 16 plus 8 is negative 8. So my vertex is going to be 4, negative 8. There's a negative sign there. I forgot to put it in. So type that equation into your calculator. y equals x squared minus 8x plus 8. You can look at your picture. So the axis of symmetry is 4, so it's the line going right through the middle. But if you go to your table of values, scroll to 4, negative 8. I'm going to scroll so actually on the y part of the table, the same numbers on top and bottom. Notice that 4, negative 8 is right in the middle, and that's where it should be. To see the symmetry, do you see how above the negative 8 is the negative 7, below is the negative 7? negative 4, negative 4, and then 1, 1. You should see that symmetry or repetition in your y values. So that's how you know you're correct. If you go to the table and you go to your point that's in the middle, find the vertex, your axis of symmetry, x equals 4, will always be the x value of the vertex. So you can check it, and then 4, negative 8. So some, there'll be some multiple choice questions that ask you which of the following is the vertex, so you can go right to the calculator. So to graph the next one, we don't go right to the calculator. And I did check with the Math 9 teachers and the geometry. This is consistent all the way through. So the first thing you need to show, and you can do this on your paper, I'll do it up here, is by hand you need to find the axis to symmetry and vertex. Then you put it into your table, then go to the calculator to copy down the other values. You could do it all by hand if you wanted to, but you don't have to. You always need to show this. If you skip this on a test, you'll just lose points for it. So if you want to go right to your table, it's your choice. You'll just lose points if you don't show it. So first, I'm going to show the axis of symmetry. X equals negative B over 2A. Again, the B value is before the X. No. So I end up with 4 divided by 2, which is 2. So that means the middle point of my table and I have it here, we always plot seven points. So the vertex in the middle, three on the right side, three on the left side. So one, two, three, two is going to be here. So right two, and then I need to know how many up or down for y. So y is going to be two squared minus four times two minus two. So four minus eight minus two. Y is going to be, four minus eight would be negative four. Negative four minus two is negative 6. So at 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, there's the vertex. Is this going to be a happy parabola or a sad parabola? Happy. You look at the x squared, it's positive. Okay, so go to your calculator, type it in to fill in the rest of your table. All you really need is these three values because it's going to flip at the bottom. And you're going to count consecutively in order negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So negative 5, negative 5. If that's negative 2, this should be negative 2. And then 3, 3. And once you have that, just go over one and just copy, make sure it's straight across from the other point. Once you have the left side, you can just go over one and match it up with the other one. Draw a curve. You should label your scale so it's a 10 by 10 grid. 
negative 10, positive 10, and then label your graph. And that's it for graphing. To solve a quadratic. When you solve a quadratic, it's real simple. It's just where the parabola crosses the x-axis. So when you graph, so you can basically type any equation on your calculator, look at the graph on the calculator, and then have your answers without showing any work. If I ask you to solve by graphing, though, you actually need to graph it in circle where the roots are. So when you're graphing, you're looking at the x values of where it crosses the x-axis. So that means y equals 0. It's an x-intercept. Okay? So where does it cross the x-axis? They're called roots or zeros. So there's three cases. Okay? Keep in mind real solutions versus complex solutions. We just finished the unit of complex numbers. So we could get answers that have i's in them because we're taking square roots of negatives. So watch out for those. Now, if I have real solutions, you have three cases. Your parabola could cross the x-axis twice. It could cross it once. It might not cross it at all. So draw some pictures to represent. So let's put an x and y axes. And you show me a picture where there's two solutions, where there's one solution, and when there's no real solution. I'm just going to walk around the first picture I see. I'm just going to put it up. So when it crosses twice, we don't need a line in there, so just a parabola. So crosses twice would be something like this. So here would be the first root or solution. Here's the second root or solution. There's two solutions. What would one solution look like? No linear equations here, just the parabola crossing twice. Once, not at all. Crossing an oh. x-axis, not a system. So not two parabolas, just crossing the axes once, twice, or not at all. So let's draw one upside down. So let's, here would be a negative x squared. So here's crossing once. So there's one root. It's actually called a double root as well. So you just end up with x equals the same number twice. And then no real solutions. Remember, if we look at the heading, it would be something like this. It doesn't cross the x-axis at all. Okay. So if I look at number 3, it says solve by graphing. What are the two x values? It crosses twice, so what are the answers? Negative 2 is right. So here's the first solution, negative 2. Here's the second solution, 4. So if you check, you just want to plug it in. Does 0 equal negative 2 squared minus 2 times negative 2 minus 8? What's negative 2 squared? Negative 2 times negative 2? Plus 4. And 4 plus 4 is 8, and 8 minus 8 is 0. It checks. The next one, does 0 equal 4 squared minus 2 times 4 minus 8? 16 minus 8 is 8 minus 8, 0. I just want to remind you, though, that if you were to solve by factoring, 0 equals, what are the factors that multiply to a negative 8 and combine to a ne uh, negative 2? 4 and 2, what are the signs? And then with this solution, x is 4. With this solution, x is negative 2. You can check using a variety of methods that you already have in your tool belt. Okay? So whatever method you use to solve, you should get the same thing. So if I don't tell you how to solve and you want to use quadratic formula, even though we haven't used it at that point, if you want to solve by graphing, if you want to solve by factoring, solve by whatever method is easier for you. Okay? In this case, it says to solve by graphing, so you have to solve by graphing. So let's look at number four. 
We're going to solve by graphing. So let's go ahead and find the axis of symmetry. So there is no picture shown. So x equals negative b over 2a. So on my table of values, I'll put over here, negative 2 is in the middle. And then the y value is going to be a negative of negative 2 squared minus 4 times negative 2 minus 4. So negative 4 plus 8 minus 4 is what? What's that? I think I heard it. Negative 4 plus 8 is 4, a positive 4, and 4 minus 4 is 0. So go to your calculator, type it in. Is it a happy parabola or a sad parabola? Sad. It's a negative x squared, so it should be upside down. So go to your calculator, type it in, copy down the table of values, and let's graph it. Goes from negative 5 to 1, it should. And then negative 9, negative 4, negative 1. So going backwards, negative 1, negative 4, negative 9. So we'll locate negative 9 down here. I'm going to count over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Negative 4, negative 4. Negative 3, negative 1. Negative 2, 0. What's the answer? Bless me. X equals negative 2. You can see it right from your table of values as well. You don't necessarily have to graph the full picture. When Y is 0, X equals negative 2. So the answer, X equals negative 2. And when you check, a negative of negative 2 squared minus 4 times negative 2. This is actually the work that you're doing right here. So we have negative 4 plus 8 minus 4, which is 0. Why am I only getting one solution here? In order to get a trinomial, we have to multiply two binomials. So if you were to actually take this and factor it, how would you factor that expression? 0 equals negative x squared minus 4x minus 4. How do you factor that? What's the first thing you have to pull out? When you have a negative in front of the x squared, you always have to pull out a negative 1 is your GCF. So negative 1 times x squared plus 4x plus 4. What are the two factors that multiply to 4 and add to 4? 2. And then what are the two roots? Negative 2 in negative 2. So you do get, look, you do get negative 2. There's two factors, but what happens with the roots? They are exactly the same. So this one solution is actually called a double root. It's the same number. Okay? All right, let's finish up with the next page. And if you look, I have all the work shown at the top. root. A system. So some of you, when I asked you to graph the a quadratic equation with two solutions, you started to draw a parabola, a parabola in a line. So if we're solving, a linear system is two lines. Notice when you get the solution to check, you have to plug it in both. A quadratic linear system is still the two points of intersection to check, though, there's going to end up being four checks because we have the two points. We're plugging both points into each equation, so it becomes longer. So your best case scenario is to have a line and a parabola and not touch at all or touch only once. It's less work. So I actually started to graph or started the work for the parabola. This work right here that I have shown is the axis of symmetry. So just to save us some time in the note part of it, there's the axis of symmetry, which is a decimal. 
Does your calculator show you decimals in your table of values? Yeah. It can, right? But type that equation in right now. X squared minus 5X minus 4. So I can see what it looks like. Go to my table. Is the table showing me decimals? Is it even showing you the vertex? No. Because it's counting by 1. If you go second table set, you can change. Remember that triangle from geometry, change of y over change of x. You can change the table to count by, let's say, 0.5. Go back to second table, and you'll now see everything in terms of decimals, or by counting by one half. Is 2.5 in the middle of that symmetry? Yeah. Yes. So my vertex, when I plug in two and a half, I get negative, two point, uh, negative 10 and a quarter. You can use the calculator, but you always have to show that by hand, and it's especially important when the table doesn't show you the vertex. So let's graph it. So on our table of values, let's plug it in. So in the middle, 1, 2, 3 is 2.5, negative 10.25. I don't type the linear equations in the calculator. Can you? Yes. If you did, this would be your y1 and this is your y2. I always just graph a line based on the slope and the intercept. So when there's no intercept, what is it for the line? Zero. So this is really plus zero. So starting at zero, how do I move? Up or down two? Down two. Down two over one. one. Down two over one. over one. So go ahead and graph your line. You could use your calculator cover as a straight edge. I always, because I'm doing it up here, will plot more points than I need so I can sketch it by hand. Could also get out the line tool, though. Especially when the board's not calibrated. So here's y equals negative 2x. Go to your calculator to get the quadratic, or you can look up here. It goes from 0 to 5 for x. I'm not using the halves. I went back to the integers for x. And then negative 4, negative 8, negative 10, negative 10, negative 8, negative 4. One, two, three, four. One, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, negative 10. So we're going to have to go off the graph for that vertex, and then after negative 10 is negative 8, 5, negative 4. So that's what it looks like when you graph, and we can see that the one point that they do intersect is 4, negative 8. But my question is, should you leave it like that? Do they only cross in one spot? If you look at that picture, the answer is no. So I should extend which side of the parabola? The left. And where is it going to cross? You can go to your calculator, look at your table of values. So if you scrolled up, it would be negative 1, on the table of values, which is right there. So negative 1, 2. Yep, I have to go back to finish and label. Make sure I label both equations. So y equals x squared minus 5x minus 4. Probably more important than that, though, is the check. You have to make sure if it, show, if it says on a state test or even one of my tests, you have to show that it does check by plugging in both points. And I always do a t-chart. So but I don't extend it all the way through. So if I check the point negative 1, 2, 
quadratic on one side, linear on the other. So is 2 equal to negative 1 squared minus 5 times negative 1 minus 4? This ends up being 1 plus 5, which is what? 6 minus 4. I end up with 2 equals 2. That checks. And the linear equation is does 2 equal negative 2 times negative 1? 2 equals 2. That checks. Now I have to check for negative 8. So does negative 8 equal 4 squared minus 5 times 4 minus 4? 16 minus 20 is a negative 4, and negative 4 minus 4 is a negative 8. Checking in the linear, which is always shorter, is negative 8 equal to negative 2 times 4? It is. That checks.